So many people are curious about the difference between gray matter and white matter. It helps to have a visual for sure. And while I was doing some dissection work in the nerve project, I created a kind of a section of brain tissue that made the distinction visually super clear. So I thought I'd show that to you and tell you some stories about gray matter and white matter. Come on down to our little shrine table here and have a look. We have a section of our beloved captain's uh, brain tissue here. And the uh, captain had you know, a bit of a, a brain trauma, actually, as he passed. And so we don't have kind of a regular, uh, a regular border here, as we might expect in a section of this tissue. But you might not know what a section of this tissue looks like anyway, so that's OK. What I'm really wanting to focus on here, actually, is this color difference. See, look at this. We have on the outskirts of this section this beautiful wavy coastline here. Do you see how I, if you follow me, if you, if you did this every day and followed this, you'd have better eyesight for sure. Um, see how it goes in and out, and we're following the convolutions of the surface of the, of the, cere of the cerebrum, right, and, and its cortex. So we're going to call this the, the neocortex, right, the, this surface here. Uh, the, the, the new part of the brain, as it were, because we humans kind of have big brains. We haven't really caught up to the dolphins yet, but we're doing all right. Um, so here, this darker section, we're going to call that gray matter. And this lighter section, we're going to call that white matter. Now, if you were actually a colorist or, <laughs> or an artist uh, dealing with pigments, you would say that's not gray and that's not white, right? Well, the colors, just consider them ideas, right, rather than exact, exact, um, you know, color reference. But so our gray matter is on the outside here. Our white matter is, is deep to that. And on the surface of the gray matter, we have uh, some membrane here. That's the arachnoid right there. So the arachnoid is like a drapery over the brain tissue. The arachnoid, that's a beautiful membrane there. Actually, I'm going to flip this over so I can show you that membrane a little better. Um, you can see there are little convolutions even on the inside here, but let me get that arachnoid again. No, it's not easier on this side actually. I was doing better on the other side. There you go, arachnoid. And what I want you to see is that the arachnoid kind of drapes over the top, but you see the arachnoid doesn't poke down through the gyri. It doesn't, the arachnoid doesn't follow the exact convolutions of the gray matter, but the pia does, and the pia is this sort of remnant surface here. It's only one or two, uh, two or three cell layers thick, and the pia is coating, coating the surface of the actual neuronal tissues, whereas the, the arachnoid is kind of draped over the whole structure. So arachnoid and pia, gray matter, white matter. Now, why is it colored differently? Well, because form follows function a little bit, and color follows structure. So the gray matter is the cell bodies. Of, of the neurons. So neurons have their cell bodies and they have their axons. Axons are long prolongations from the cell bodies and they also have dendrites. Now the dendrites are closer to the cell body. They're not as long. So the dendrites are, are connecting to other nerve cell bodies all in this gray matter. So there's an incredible communication network here. And then as the nerve cell bodies throw off their axons here, the axon is wrapped in what we call glial cells in, in the brain. Glial cells, they're, they're um, connective tissue cells. So the, the white is indicative of a fatty connective tissue cell that's wrapping the axon of the neuron. Now, in another video, I talked about the difference between a nerve and a neuron, and you might want to watch that one uh, to understand that. But so here we have axons from the nerve cell bodies concentrated in the gray matter that because they're fatty, uh, fatty wrappings around the nerves, uh, they give it a different color. It's as simple as that. So we have the kind of the fatty connective tissue wrappings around the axons here, and we have the nerve cell bodies with their dendrites connecting to one another here. And that's kind of the main, the main visual, uh, you know, uh, difference that's created by those differences in structure, you know, fatty connective cell wrappings around axons and, and not, 
not wrapped um, nerve cell bodies. Now this isn't the only place in your body where you have nerve cell bodies and, and, and myelinated axons. The myelinated axons are running all down your big nerves in your body, going all through your body, whereas the, the nerve cell bodies tend to be located in, in sort of concentrations where they can chat with each other, right, and communicate and, and receive signals from axons and then transfer them to other nerve cell bodies, right? So we have what we call ganglia, singular ganglion. So the ganglia are, for instance, um, places of interchange of communication of nerve cells that we'll find, say, along the spine or in other, in other plexuses that are around our bodies. You can have loose gatherings of, gang, of, uh, of nerve cell bodies that may not even be visible to the eye. So we're not only having nerve cell bodies in your brain, we're having them in the ganglia, which are scattered throughout your body, some more famous than others, some larger and visible to the eye, some invisible altogether. So, and these are communication pathways. Now, the myelin itself um, is not on every axon, or not in the same amount, let's say. So nerve cell bodies, you can have a whole group of axons surrounded by just single layer of, of a my, myelin sheath. And those, um, we would even, we would call those unmyelinated, and they'd be only, say, maybe point uh, well, let's say one to two microns in, in, uh, in, in the breadth of those axons. And then the thicker, the thicker axons, they, they have more layers of myelin on them to the point where we say that one's myelinated. So when we go over two microns, we're going to say, oh, that's a myelinated nerve. And that's going to change the rate at which, at which the communication <laughs> and the expression of an uh, action potential expresses in that particular nerve. So basically, those heavily myelinated nerves communicate faster. They're like more insulated. And the less heavily in insulated nerves uh, that are so, so very narrow, right, those communicate more slowly. Now you might be like, well, why would you want to have a nerve that communicates slowly? Well, come on, throughout your life, you have all kinds of things you don't really want to hear, <laughs> right? So we can all nod our heads to that. And so um, we, have, uh, very, we have different preferences in the, in the development of our structures with regards to how fast we want something to happen. So I have some candles here. If I stuck my fingers in the candle, Right? My, my reflex that would pull my hand back from the candle would, would, would happen quicker than the, the sensation of pain that I would receive as at the effect of being dumb enough to stick my hands in a fire. So, when, but we do that by accident sometimes, and thank goodness if you put your hand on a hot girdle, you know, your hand will pull back before you sit there and cook your hand, right? So you, and then you'll feel the pain. When you pull back, you'll, you'll say, ouch, after the fact. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So that's a little story about our, our, uh, <laughs> our gray matter and white matter, just so you can understand that simple distinction of brain anatomy. Thanks, Captain. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.